Over shallow rough ground can be an effective way of catching a variety of species and is a method I often use when targeting bass. Because the depth is shallow, say up to 20 to 25 feet, I find the best method to use is to cast the lure away from the kayak and jig or retrieve back. I have often been out on the kayak in shallow water and seen shoals of bass down below and no matter what I try, cannot catch them by fishing vertically. It is almost as if when I can see them and they can see me, they will not take any lure you lower down amongst them. However, by casting the lure well away from the kayak and working it back, I can get them to take. It is the time of year for me to start to focus on targeting bass from both the shore and the kayak. So I headed out to a rough ground mark to do some drifting with bass as the main target species. When drifting over a mark, I usually combine drifting and with trolling, a method I highlighted in the previous video. In other words, when paddling back up tide or upwind to reset a drift, troll the lure. However, on this trip, floating weed made it impossible to troll even when using weedless, due to the amount of loose weed. Well, I'm just about to start my session. It's just coming up to low water now, and I'm probably gonna fish two or three hours of the flooding tide on this mark. And I've got a selection of lures with me, a mixture of soft plastics, weedless soft plastics, and some plugs. Like I said in the introduction there, when I made the previous video about casting and retrieving from the kayak and, and mixing it up with trolling. I don't think I'm going to be able to troll today because as you can see there, there, there's a hell of a lot of floating weed and that's going to make it virtually impossible to troll. So what I'm, think, I'm going to focus on today is drifting over the mark, the rough ground and, and casting and retrieving the lure back to the kayak. And that's, that's going to be using the weedless soft plastics. And although I brought a few with me, the one I'm going to mainly use is this one here, and this is a six inch sluggo rigged on the Savage Sandhill 16 gram weedless jig head. Again, it's a lure that I featured in the last video about casting and retrieving from the kayak. And it's a great lure and you can see, you can see how flexible it is and how, how much that would imitate a real sandhill in the water. So that's the one I'm mainly going to use because it, it, it's such a great catcher. But of course the one that's supposed to go with this jig head is the Savage Sandal Slug, which also is, is a great lure. But this year I've started experimenting with actually putting the Sluggo on the same jig head. And although they both both imitate sandal as well, I just, just think the the Sluggo just imitate image because it's just that little bit more flexible, um, just imitates the sandy a little bit little bit better. I've got um, one or two other weedless soft plastics with me. This is a Sidewinder weedless sandhill, fairly new on the market, which I'm maybe try out. But like I said, I, you know, if I catch on one lure, I tend to just stick with it and don't mess about, and I can't see the point of changing it. But I've got that one with me as well, again weedless. And a couple of other weedless soft plastics as well. That one there. Um, that one there so good mix of lures but like I said I'll probably focus on just drifting and casting and, and jigging the lure back to the kayak with the direction of the wind now I'm actually drifting towards the shore and along the shore so I'm having to paddle paddle away from the shore to reset up the, the next drift. The, the tide is taking me along the shoreline and the little bit of breeze we got is pushing me towards it. Actually, and that's, that's not a bad thing for bass fishing because I usually find with the bass, I mean, I'm working in depths close to the shoreline there. It's, it's gonna be about 10 feet, 10, 11 feet, and I'm working up to about 25 feet. Um, but I usually find the bass I usually usually find I get the bass in the shallower water, sort of 20 feet and under. 
the rod reel and line I'm using, I've got my usual 8 foot 15 to 50 gram lure rod. You can, of course, go a lot lighter. Um, but I use this rod for lots of different types of fishing, sometimes a lot heavier fishing than this. So it's, it suits several different types of fishing, but like I said, you can come right down to maybe a 10 to 25 gram, 10 to 30 gram would be absolutely fine. Little 4,000 size spinning reel, and this, this is loaded with light braid today. I've got just 8 pound braid on this today, and a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. And then just a little link to be able to clip the soft plastic here on or change lures when I want to. So the method is, while I'm drifting along here, is just to cast it out in front of me and then jig it back while you're turning the handle of the reel. And of course it's the speed that you turn the handle. Oh, and we're in, we're in now. Yeah, but I think this is just a, I think this is just a Pollock. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a Pollock. Just goes to show how effective that lure is, and the reason it's so effective, of course, is because it it looks so much like a. No, oh, it's come off. Well, that doesn't. Again, it was only a small Pollock, so we're not we're not particularly worried about that. Effective because it looks so much like a real sand deal. So that's the method, just cast it out and then jig it back to the kayak. And what I'm doing is casting maybe out to my side here and then casting around in a semicircle, trying to cover as much ground as I can as I'm drifting along. I don't know what, the birds are going absolutely mad over there. The seagulls, and there must be a shoal of fish. I'm just wondering if it's bass. Yeah, they're going mad, or it could be mackerel chasing, chasing some bait fish, but yeah, they're going mad, the birds. It's always a sign there's fish around. Could be bass, who knows? Well, there's an example of the weed, the floating weed I was talking about, makes it to totally impossible to troll a lure. Yep, the casting and jigging, as you can see, weedless. This is because the weed is all on the surface. Um, I'm working underneath it so the lure's not coming back caked in weed. But really frustrating when it's like this and you, you want to do trolling. And even, even with weed, weedless, if you're trolling, if you troll a lure through that, if the, if the hook doesn't pick it up, it usually picks it up at the, the junction between the... where the lure, the lure is actually clipped on. Uh, weed will still gather and then you're not going to catch anything. Right, we're in into a fish. This is on the sluggo, on the, rigged on the jig head, and this, I'm pretty sure that this is a bass. By the way, it's side kiting. Oh, well, it's kiting, yep. And the, the way it's banging. It's pretty close, pretty close to shore. Apologies if there's rain on the lens. Unfortunately, it's, it's drizzling away, and of course, getting on the probably getting on the lens. But yeah, this is definitely a bass. You see it coming in. Here it comes.
Yeah, well hooked there on the weedless setup. If anyone is, is, is never confident and not really used to using weedless, they, hook, they do hook the fish no problem. Right, get this unhooked and we'll have a look at it. There it is, nice bass. It's well over the size limit. It measures 48 centimetres. Size limit, as many of you will know in Cornwall, is 37 and a half centimetres. Although I don't take them unless they're at least at least 42 centimetres, and often put some of those back. So first bass of the year for me, and um, only just started bass fishing, so that's really really pleasing. Beautiful fish. I carried on for a while and the surface weed cleared just enough for me to try trolling, but no more bass. However, always really pleasing to catch a bass whenever you target them. Once again, I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching.